to you. Happy birthday, dear Brittany. Happy birthday to you. What's up, everybody? It's Nick here from thegameraccess.com with Unscripted Access episode number eight. On this week's show, we got Brittany Parks. I'm back, bitches. Bronson Fiore. Oh, Diablo's so good. <laughs> Ashton Holiday. I don't have anything clever to say. And our latest staff member of the Gamer Access. I want to introduce you all to Danielle Kirk. Hi, guys. All Woo! right. So we've got a great show ahead of you guys. We appreciate the comments and questions. We'll get to that at the end of the podcast. But we'll go ahead and start with the news. Tomb Raider and Bioshock Infinite have been delayed until next year. Now, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I'm actually kind of happy about this. Uh, you, might be, you might be like, Nick, what the hell's your issue? Well, to be honest with you, end of this year, we have too many games coming out. Just like every single holiday season. My time alone is kind of restricted, but releasing these games in February, March, when there's no other games coming out, is personally smart in my opinion. Because one, it's going to allow the developers to make a better game, so us, the gamers, get a better experience. And two... People such as myself, anyone else, we're going to have more time to actually play the game. And Tomb Raider and Bioshock Infinite are two games that I definitely am looking forward to, especially Tomb Raider. Checked out Tomb Raider E3 last year, was blown away, could not wait for that game to release. Definitely be checking out E3 this year. But what do you guys think? Uh, I, I think there's not a clusterfuck of games anymore. <laughs> <In> November, <laughs> the holiday that. season, there is always, always, every holiday season, doesn't matter what games it are, there are always just a complete clusterfuck of games and honestly it's better i know people bitched about how like oh they're delayed like they get really mad about that shit but you shouldn't be mad because they're actually taking the time to make a better game so would you rather have a better game that is delayed or a game now that is like half-assed I think that, first off, I'm of the same belief when it comes to game delays especially because i'm used to it because i'm a blizzard fan uh... twelve years waiting for diablo finally here um, but uh, I'm not as pissed about Tomb Raider I'm kind of pissed about Bioshock just because that game was supposed to come out two days after my birthday uh, but I don't know like every year the holiday season is so packed I remember last year like uh, we had Modern Warfare, Skyrim Mario, Zelda Uncharted 3 Uncharted 3 and Saints Row all in a three week period it was oh, ridiculous. I mean, it's impossible to play that many games, especially if you're just a regular consumer. Oh, th like like we do this as pretty much a part time job, and I played all those games. I finished probably half of them, and at the end of it, uh, I it was just too much. Like I was sleep deprived. I was even crankier at work. You know, just like it was uh, like games should be spread out throughout the year. Like, the fact that, like, last July, Catherine was the only game that came out, like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, especially during the summer. The summer is the worst, and it's like, it doesn't make any sense because a large percentage of gamers are people that are still in school. They've got yeah. the whole summer to play games. This summer, what do we've got? We've got Max Payne 3, which is absolutely incredible. Got to check out PAX East. It's out to the public oh, now. <laughs> oh, my God. So yeah, definitely check that out if you haven't already. We've just had Diablo 3 come out. They actually came out the same day. But correct me if I'm wrong, what other games are released in the summer? Uh, honestly, mostly... a lot of movies, the whole thing is with the media, a lot of movies, a lot of great movies are released in the oh, summer. Oh, yeah, the movies. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand why they don't release games in the summer because they well, all – at uh, one time, and that's like if I was, I mean, if I was doing this whole game developing, game producing thing, then I would totally release things in the summer. I would release things whenever no other games would, because I was, I would revenue much more money than anybody else. Well, I'm, yeah, you got you got to remember that like uh, last year, a lot of titles did come out in the summer that were smaller, but they just got cannibalized, like Child of Eden. But also this summer. <laughs> uh, we have very little coming out. We have and they're mostly portable games. Uh, in the future, we have Mario Mario Tennis, uh, Resistance, Gravity Rush, Theat Rhythm, Lollipop Chainsaw, The Last Story, and um, King. Did I say Kingdom Hearts? No, you didn't. But Kingdom I mean, Hearts. I'm really excited for Lollipop Chainsaw. Like, oh my god, like, Mega's super excited. But like, that's a lot two of console games, games. Indie games are making more of a statement than a lot of bigger games now, and it's kind of weird to me. Well, yeah, like that's there's two console games on that list. 
you know, like it just I feel though the industry is just so geared to releasing portable titles because people are on vacation during the summer, I guess. Though I mean how but how much press would like a big game get if it came out in July? Like, like, right. Oh, for real. Like yeah. what if Max Payne three Max Payne three came out like two months before this? It would I mean, it's already got a lot of press. But it would give even more. It'd be competing with Mass Effect and Final Fantasy like two months ago. But like you know, like if you, like last July, uh, part of the reason I think Catherine did well for an Atlas game was because there was nothing else. Yeah, you know? and that's a lot with games, and I think that's the way you should strategize. That's the uh, way I would do. I would strategize whenever there's no, whenever there is nobody else releasing games that are like a, big titles. That's how you do it. That's how you make more money. Because honestly, whenever there's like a dry spot, people just go back to used games. I mean, my, myself personally, I'll go to GameStop and I'll just be like, okay, what have I not played? And I'll play that. I won't buy anything new. Yeah, like I kept, like last summer, like I caught up on a bunch of trophies and older games, you know. Um, like I was so starved for like a quality game that when Catherine finally came out, I was like, oh, thank God. I don't know. Star for quality games. That when you told me about Catherine, I was skeptical, but I played it and I fell in love immediately. For you those should. of you that have not played Catherine, just please play it. It's, it's on 360 and PS3. Go buy it. Yeah. You know, and maybe you could try the other games, the Persona games. They're really good. Yeah. Anyway. Well, see, they halt. They always like cluster those games up in holiday season, thinking it's going to bring in more money. When I mean, they could be right in the long run, depending on the title, but. When it just comes down to it, I mean, you can't overload yourself with games. I mean, you, you don't want to spend your whole Christmas just on games. I don't but, know. I, I don't mind it. I do that pretty much every holiday. Well, I, I, well you can only <laughs> handle so many campaigns at once. You don't want to, you know, get lost. You don't want to get confused. Or, you don't want to be like know, an child. Yeah, that, yeah that's, it's, that's, that's true. And also, that's true, and I also hate the majority of my family, so I'm okay <laughs> being away from them during break. Right. <laughs> like, I like my... You know, right. I like, yeah, I like my mom and a couple other people. The rest of them are all jerks. I, li I like where this podcast is going. Yeah, we're already getting off topic. So, two yep. meter uh -huh. motion. But, eh? but, yeah, I mean, the whole thing is I understand the, the rush for holiday season because that's when people spend the majority of their money for the holiday se season because of Christmas. But at the end of the day, unless you are a Grand Theft Auto, a Halo, a Mark, Call of oh. Duty, you have a better chance to actually gain more publicity by releasing in the summer. Look at Infamous 1 and Infamous 2. Both games released around June. The games sold pretty well, despite them being sync. Well, Infamous 2 was had multiplayer, but it was multiplayer right. components. So I'm not going to get into that. But the game sold in pr pretty impressive. And another thing about it, if you've got the marketing budget, the summer. That's when all the film. That's when all the movies are coming out. Look at the movies coming out this summer. We just have the Avengers. We have the new Batman. We have Superman. Like all that's these amazing true. games. I mean, Prometheum. The list goes on and on. If you have a marketing budget, what better time to advertise your game? And that's what they did with Infamous. They had advertisements for Infamous within movie theaters on big budget movie titles. And yes, Sony paid the money for it, but they also got more sales out of it because of that. So yes, yeah. the holiday season is a great time to release games, but Max Payne 3, for example, Max Payne 3 isn't a Grand Theft Auto, but Max Payne is a popular franchise. It's an amazing game. I think releasing it the time they have, they could not have released this game at a better time because kids are about to get off school. They're going to have more time to play games. And, hey, Max Payne 3 is an amazing game. It's getting all this publicity. I mean, it has its own mural in downtown Los Angeles right now. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you can send me that picture. Oh, my God, that was amazing. It's I am just, I'm so impressed. I haven't popped it in yet. I'm about to pop it in right after this podcast. But I am so impressed with what Rockstar has done with Max Payne. It's have, like, um, mm. Have you guys seen the PC specs for that game? To run it on Max, you need an 8-core processor and 16 gigs of RAM. I it's have not crazy. seen that. It's nuts. That's crazy. Because Max Payne 3 looks great. Like, we got the chance to check it out at PAX East. Um, looks great. Um, plays great. It's definitely... It requires... It's not your easiest game to play. I'll say that. I died multiple times. But if you played oh, the earlier ones, the earlier games in the franchise, it's, it's just like those, but just better. That's right. all I can say about it right now. I'm going to have a review over it, but... So awesome. Yeah. That yeah. Do that. 
better and better as they go. Yeah, and then Diablo, the 12-year wait, from what I've seen, absolutely worth it. It's going to be a huge game. Um, Yeah, so, I mean, those are two perfect examples of, hey, more sales are going to come in the summer. Like, I guarantee you, the, the last story for the Wii... It's from the guys who made the first 10 Final Fantasies. It's a JRPG. Because it's the only game coming out this summer that's a console game, it's probably going to do really well. And, you know, you can even make a case for the big titles getting pushed uh, past uh, Christmas. Mass Effect 2 was released in, like, January. And, you know, throughout the whole year, no, no one really found a game that outdid that for the rest of the year. And by the time uh, Christmas, the next Christmas rolled around, uh, Mass Effect was at an even lower price than the other ones, and it was still one of the best games of that year. Uh, yeah, and they like profited game, off of that. Like I bought that game for twenty bucks. So I mean, yeah, like th- there's so much advantage to releasing earlier in the year, and when there isn't that big holiday rush. First, uh, like as an editor for a site, like the holiday rush is just awful because you have to play all those games or the majority of them to have an opinion for the end of the year stuff or for review, or whatever the purpose is. And if you're a consumer, you, yeah, you have more choices, but, like, you can't get all the games you want. Like, last year, I didn't buy Saints Row, I didn't buy, uh, you know, I missed out on a couple games, but but the publisher's, the publisher's excuse, uh, same reason why the consoles almost always come out around that time of year, is but, 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 but Christmas. Yeah. Right, and I understand that. It's just it's one of those things where you've got too many games, your game's just going to get lost because there's so many freaking games coming out between November, December. Well, not many, more games releasing that no, November. Like, November's just always... You always got Call of Duty, and whether you hate or love the franchise, Call of Duty's what always gets the attention for that month. I mean, look at Mass Effect 3. If Mass Effect 3 were released down in the holiday season, I can guarantee you... All these debates about the ending would not be present. Why does everyone talk about it? Gamers didn't know what else to talk about. They're like, okay, there's no games, but Mass Effect 3 just came out. A massive game just came out. And we gotta talk about something. So everyone's, oh, the endings. Now gotta check out Mass Effect 3, beat the game, see what this ending's about. And look at the hype that game got. Just off the It really did, just that. No matter how many cupcakes they sent. (laughs) But honestly... (laughs) I think gamers mm, as a whole are getting bitchier by the day. They're bitching oh, about God. Bioshock delayed. Okay, well, do you want to play this game? Like I said earlier, do you want to play this game half-assed? Do you want it to be like a game that you're going to bitch about anyways because it's half-assed? Or do you want to wait until it's actually, like, until the developers actually think it's a good game to release and it's finally just final to release? And then play it because I'd rather well, fi- I'd rather play it when it's final and it's great because I know it's going to be great otherwise. But people, I'm fine people with a few delays. Either way, if it's, it's good, like, they're going to bitch. If it's bad, they're going to bitch. Everybody's going to bitch. Well, it, it's well, that gamer in like, Station Rock City. Uh, Death, like, they, they, they didn't polish it. They didn't take care of it. Like Resident Evil exactly. is one of my favorite games, and they just they just they, they didn't do anything with it. But yeah. it was also developed by Slant Six, and oh, they they did so called yeah. confrontation, which was shitty as fuck. <laughs> so I mean, all right, okay. Couple okay, patches if you don't later, it, then I'm I feel really sorry for you, and I'm sorry for the language. But Resident <laughs> Evil: Second City, I was expecting it to be great. I read really bad reviews, but I was like, you know, I'm gonna have a positive attitude when I go into this. I mean, the multiplayer was cool, but. Uh, uh, I, the thing for me is gamers are getting very entitled, and it's kind of disgusting. Like, um, I recommend people, like, just an example of how just horribly entitled gamers can be is, like, what other art form do you know of where people would dem- fucking demand an ending change? Like, right, really? like, hey, it's a famous painter painted some, like, masterpiece. He thought it was a masterpiece. And then everybody was like, oh, that sucks. Paint a different one. Like, yeah, when, well, when, another uh, art form, I mean, film, there's a lot of that going on in the film industry yeah. as well. No, but. Not new, th- th- yeah, but there's, there's a like... There's a controversy that, that, with piracy going on in the film industry, and I don't really get that, because film industry makes way more than they ever should. Yeah, also, For, like, the, the, I've never heard of film, like, take the, the, I, the take back I am legend movement, like, you know, <laughs> like that, take you back know. Star Wars movement, but that's not really an ending, that's just like a whole thing. Yeah, that that's a we shouldn't have ever made those terrible movies. Um, Wait, what movies? It was okay. 
the first uh, Star Green's Wars, okay. like the er- the new trilogy for Star Wars. Okay, uh, just, just tell me that you we should have never made Star Wars. That was no, amazing. oh my God, no, the <laughs> no, 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 Star no, no, Wars no, 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 one's saying that. You know, Empire Strikes Back is fantastic. Um, that yeah, first, lo- that whole first series. Lo- like, if you just, oh God, pretty much everything about Gamer and Tom I want to complain about pretty much can be summed up by uh, an episode of the Game Overthinker. Uh, I think it's 59. Yeah, just go go listen to that. That you know, So I don't have That's to rant That's to promote it. podcasts on our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm promoting a video, but I think, you know, edu- oh. it's an educational video, so it's, it's cool. But anyways, <laughs> Tomb Raider was, um, it was set for the, when was it set for to release? This fall? This yeah. fall, yes. I think so, yeah. Okay, and now it's set for the first quarter of 2013. Yeah, so I'm we've just got we've got a little bit longer to wait. It's not like they've delayed it a whole year. The only time I really get upset about delays is like a Gran Turismo situation, where it's delayed, then delayed, then delayed, 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 and finally it comes out. And it's delayed for four or five years. For example, Gran Turismo was supposed to launch on the PSP day one. Doesn't come out till six, seven years after the PSP comes out. Now that's the type of stuff where it's like, okay, I don't even really care about the game anymore. But delaying it a quarter and then finally meeting that second expectation, I'm fine with that. Plus, Ken Levine came out himself, the creative director, pretty much came out and said, "Look, we've developed the game, and in March when we announced the release date, we felt we would meet that release date and it'd be a great game. But as we've continued working on the game, we've discovered new opportunities, ways to make the game better. We just need more time." So I'm fine with that. We've got- I am too. I think it's perfectly okay. I will wait how many ever months or even years it takes for a game to be perfectly polished that I will be like, I'll play it and I'll be like, wow, like, just wow. I won't even have words. I just want to say wow. <laughs> it just totally depends on context. You know, this where, where it's delayed because they have a chance to improve it and all they need is time to improve it. That's great. It just it, worries me when they, when they need to delay it because, you know, the publisher says the developer is not doing anything, you know, like what Bethesda is doing with Human Head, that whole controversy. Or, you know, when they don't even address it at all, they just keep saying, they just keep delaying and delaying and not really addressing why. Like, that worries me. Uh, there are a few games out there right now that are in that situation. Uh, but the, the current, center, uh, current situation that Bioshock is in, uh, that's great. I will I will wait for that. If that's what you need to do to get that game to be amazing, I, no problem. And Tomb Raider, that, that I feel I feel like that's the perfect move too, is to move that into uh, the first half of next year. Does anybody remember when Gran Turismo was set for November like first, and then they delayed it another two weeks at the last minute? That was funny. Yep. So <laughs> I've got a funny funny story. I'm gonna keep that short. I'll keep it really short. But yeah, for Gran Turismo Five. So everyone, all the websites were contacted. So they're like, when, we, we want to review copies, everything like that. And they were about to send review copies out and then made a press release the next day saying the game was delayed. Like they literally did this last minute. And then the game came out and the review copies, no one, not even IGN, not even the big sites got a review copy before the release date. Like, so it was, it was just after Christmas and it just hit their doorstep without even being told about it. And websites were like flipping out. And it was so funny because Gran Turismo 5, you need to take at least a good three, four days to play that game before you can review it. The, all these larger sites, because they're so focused on, well, I got to get my review out first. Who cares about the quality? I just want my review out first. Posted the reviews. Didn't even mention half of the stuff that happens in the game. And they got called out. That was a classic moment for the gaming industry from someone who runs an indie gaming website. I just love seeing these larger sites get exposed. But, yeah, I just had to bring that, <laughs> bring that up. Um, but, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if it's being delayed to make the game better, I'm fine. I mean, if you keep delaying the game and it comes out and it's garbage, like too human, that kind of makes me upset. Because too human. Oh. I mean, they didn't delay it, but it was still shit. Yeah, it's don't. If you're gonna delay a game to make it a great game, fine, but don't delay it and make it shit or continuously delay it over and over again. Just don't announce a release date in the first place. What I like. Um, with Tomb Raider is whenever they delayed it, whenever they announced they delayed it, they added a screenshot just because they wanted to apologize for the for the fans. And you can find that screenshot. I don't know where I found it. I think it was GameInformer.com. But yeah, 
And it looks pretty good so far. I mean, there's not really much you can tell from that one screenshot. Of course, you can't really tell how the game's going to be from any screenshot, just how the graphics are or whatever. But, I mean, I would play it. I mean, I would play it because I'm a Tomb Raider fan all the way. <laughs> but Yeah, like like what they showed at E3 last year was, was not very far off. Uh, yeah, it was just a project. teaser trailer. It didn't even show any type of gameplay. They didn't even have it for play. Well, no, no, they they had the uh, the you crawl through. The, oh yeah, the you're right. You're and right. All that, but it was you know it was very small small bits and uh, right. it was not you, you could tell it was not a complete game really yet. So, I'm I'm not surprised by them, uh, ex- yeah, delaying it, and I I'm kind of I'm glad for it. I want that game to succeed. That looks real cool. Oh right. Someone, someone needs to re- someone needs to make and release a Duke Nukem documentary just so I can see all the delays and all. <laughs> Man, Duke. That's another game. It got delayed uh, how many times and came out to be pure sir? garbage. Mm-hmm. Fourteen years. That game was announced in 1997. There are some people that, that probably played that game. That the game is older than they are. <laughs> I, I remember when Gearbox had it. They had it and they announced the release date, and then they delayed it. What were they delaying? Because they clearly had this game that there was no way they were going to develop it to the point where it was good again. Uh, it was like, probably- at this point, that their job was to make it not break so that you could just experience this piece of gaming history. There was no saving it. So I want to know what like, what, what made them delay it. Did they actually think they were improving it? I, well, the, they probably found a game-breaking bug in it. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah. You know, like, th- that, that game just, ugh, it's so sad. And what I, what I remember about that game is it got announced at PAX Prime 2010, and, apparently, and like, there were like four, five, six-hour lines to play it. Yeah, you know, like, and, and I remember I was excited when I heard it was coming back because I was like, "Oh, dude, I love the old Duke Nukem games." And then you know it comes out and it's you know awful. Yeah. Oh, God damn it! Oh, All right, so we even have an elaborate over Bioshock. Bioshock Infinite, I'm definitely looking forward to. I've always I've been yeah. a fan of both Bioshock One and Bioshock Two, um, and Ken Levine, he he's definitely one of the more creative people um, in the gaming industry. He's very outspoken. Um, not as outspoken as a person such as David Jaffe, but he's outspoken. He j- he doesn't give you the typical PR answer. He just goes out there and says exactly what the issue is, why the game is being delayed, what's going on. And I'm a, I'm a fan of the Bioshock franchise. I definitely can't wait. I'm loving Bioshock Infinite. But hey, it was delayed. That's fine. Hey, when it comes out in February, I might actually have time to play it. Whereas this holiday season, I mean, there's no way <laughs> that people are going to be able to play all the games that they want to within the time that they're being released. Unless- that's why I'm so. I'm actually. That's another reason why I'm so glad Tomb Raider and Bioshock are both delayed because, honestly, no time to play those. Otherwise. Bioshock I probably would have played just because it's near my birthday. I love the setting and the story of the first Bioshock, but the gameplay really pissed me off. Um, the second one I didn't like at all. Um, so I, but this third one, like the the trailers that they show and like what what they've shown of it, like I was really impressed. I was like, oh, this has completely changed my opinion of you know where this franchise is going. So uh, you know, I hope it turns out good, especially with this delay. Um, as for the holiday season. I'll get to most of the games just because of the game flying, because I like to be as accurate as I can during the game of the year stuff. But I'm not going to finish them all. Didn't finish them all last year. And, you know, it's just impossible. It's goddamn impossible. All right. So, anything else anyone wants to bring up before we move on to our next bit of news? I wonder what's going on with The Last Guardian. The Last Guardian. That you you did bring that up. Um. The Last Guardian, who knows? Um, it was announced at E3 two years ago, yep. and people are like, oh, this is going to be awesome. It's going to be like a sequel to Shadow of the Colossus. People are like really looking forward to it. And it's just, okay, we haven't heard anything since. It was just like Agent from Rockstar, the PS3 exclusive. Whatever happened with that? We have no clue. All they, sh- they didn't even show a teaser trailer for that game. They showed a logo that said Agent. That's all they showed. I I have my theories as to why I think it's going to be shown at E three this year. Are you talking about Agent? Agent from Rockstar Games. Agent got shut down. From Rockstar Games? 
No, yeah, that I, one didn't get shut. No, not the, the ag- not, not the agency. No. There's agent, there's the agent, agent, and the agency. What the hell? Why? Oh, agent, agent, the PS3 e- agent, the PS3 exclusive from Rockstar Games. Okay, yeah. I'm looking this up. There's Michael, pa- oh, Michael really? Pactor on the newest bonus round just confirmed they're still working on it. Okay, yeah, well, I, I was about to say, I, else, I was about to say, yeah, Asia has been canceled. Don't scare me like that. Damn. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I'm really hoping we hear something from that. We have plenty. There's, there's Last Guardian. There's Agent. It's like Sony. Like, come on. Like, you're announcing these games like PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale that people have been anticipating for years. But announce the games you've already announced. Like, show something off. Like, okay, Agent, what are you doing? Last Guardian, at least we saw a teaser trailer. But Agent, all we've seen is a logo. And yeah. I mean, Rockstar Games, yes, they're working on Grand Theft Auto V. I mean, Agent, we might not even see till next generation for all we know. But at this point, I mean, yeah, I mean, Rockstar uh, Games, they just finished up Max Payne 3, they've got Grand Theft Auto 5. Like, you're talking about a lot of resources there. And it's no gonna be Rockstar, like StarCraft Ghost, it's it, just gonna, <laughs> they're just gonna put a bullet in its head. And knowing Rockstar Games, they're not a company to release crap, they're not. Every, almost everything right. they release is of quality. So, um, they're, I, they're not going to be one of these companies where it's like, okay, well, we're focused on Grand Theft Auto V, but we said we're going to release this exclusive, so let's just throw this garbage out there and just call it a day. They're not going to do that. Um, so I'm hoping we hear something from E3. Like, E3 this year is going to be insane. I, I, yeah. I, I need to stop saying that. I say that on my show each week. I say that on Scripted Access true. each week. This is, this is... Hey, man, oh. E3, E3, you know, you don't talk about E3 is going to be insane. <laughs> Yo, oh, man. But, uh, Considering the potential of what could happen there compared to the last few years, th- this could be huge. And that's what I'm telling people. There's not going to be new consoles announced. There's no way. No. At this point, there's so much going on that needs to be announced and taken care of for this for these consoles. Sony I don't just even ca- care about new consoles anymore. Honestly, I don't even think we fucking need new consoles. I am perfectly... Uh, consoles we I, have. I don't think we need them right now. I think announcing them next year, E3, with a 2013 release would be would be solid. Sony, there's no way in hell they can announce PlayStation 4. You've got your Vita to focus on right now. You need to focus heavily on your Vita. So, Because if Sony, if Sony goes out there and announces the PlayStation 4 and... Then, Obviously, the PlayStation 4 is going to take up at least 75% of the press conference. You still got your PS3 and Vita. Like, okay, Sony, so you're coming out with the PlayStation 4. What are you going to do about the people that spent $250, $300 plus on your Vita? What are you doing about that? It's It just doesn't work that way. Like, I think it would be beneficial to have new consoles just because, um, obviously, if you've been PC gaming recently and you play the PC version of games like Skyrim or Saints Row you really notice how much better they look on a high-end machine than their console counterpart and how much better they run. And I'd and that's what I'd like to see on next-gen consoles. Not so much a graphics upgrade as I would just like to see better frame rates, higher resolutions, you know, like native 1080p, not upscaled. You know, that kind of stuff. It'd be good. It'd be awesome. But. I'm going to take this silence and just say that the Thunder won 77 over 75 Lakers! <laughs> My Rockies <laughs> lost again last I checked, so... <laughs> and if you don't care about NBA basketball, you're right there with me. Because basketball is oh. all about college basketball. I hate the NBA. But anyways, before we get into a whole sports discussion... College. Get the hell out of here. But anyways, we're going to... There's been, oh, God, there's been a lot of... Di- a game called Diablo 3. I don't know if anyone's heard it, but... I died. Man, <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure no one's heard of it. A game, a game by the name of uh, Diablo 3 released after 12 years or whatever of anticipation. And people were pissed off because people waited 12 years. They took the game home. And they couldn't connect to the servers. Bronson, give us the inside scoop since I know you picked up Diablo 3 and you've been anticipating it for years. Okay, so I went to the midnight launch, actually, with my friend Quinn, and I went back home, loaded it up, uh, couldn't connect to the servers, figured, well, I gotta be working early in the morning anyway, went to bed, went to work, came back around 3 in the afternoon, and everything was fine, but uh, a lot of people, for that first, like, 12 hours or so, uh, couldn't connect to the servers because so many people were trying to connect. Uh, actually, you know, actually, Giant Bomb's live stream got interrupted at one point because of it. Um, it's really not that big of a deal now, though. At this point, you can just log in and play. 
Um, speaking of though, that game is fantastic, and there's a starter edition uh, out if you guys want to ju- just want to try it. So, yeah. edition as if you haven't played in the di- any of the Diablos, because I have not, and I would like to play it because so many people are raving about it. Um, you a lot know, of people the... don't care about the story. I mean, it's ju- it's more about the gameplay. I, so. I care more about the stories than the game. I know. Well, the story you can get filled up. IGN has a uh, video, like Diablo in five minutes, where they tell you the whole story in five minutes up okay. to this point. But um, I would say that the starter edition is basically, I think they let you play up to like level like level 10, maybe. And uh, you can check, the, you know, just check the game out before you buy it. Um, is, yeah, is there I like really, a package where you can buy like one, two, and three all together? Uh, I know you can buy uh, one and two in a battle chest from the Blizzard store. So yeah, that, no, I've seen that one, but I never, I never honestly knew what it was. I thought it was like World of Warcraft, and I never. I, no, 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 it's. Is it a lot different? Like not a lot different. I mean, there there are certain itself. elements that you may think are similar. It's a lot uh, faster. It's way faster. Wow. What is the story about? Like, I've never even looked into Diablo. It's, as crazy as that sounds, I have really never. Um, basically, uh, giant. Uh, there's there's the three. Oh god, this could be so hard to explain. It's so geeky, but um, <laughs> it's okay. What we're here for. All right, so I'm just gonna do this. The simple plot summary. Basically, there are three prime evils that are down in hell. And basically, they want to il- unleash hell upon the world, and they succeed. And in the previous two games, they have succeeded. And now, uh, in Diablo three, you're trying to stop all the demons. Um, it's it's definitely neat. Uh, I thought the story was pretty good. Their cinematics are amazing. They have a great cinematic department. Um, that said, I definitely think you you should try the starter edition. Uh, it's free to play to try it, and you might get into it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I know I can't wait to play co-op with Anthony and Ashton. Okay, this might uh, be a really stupid question, but do you need like a really good internet connection to play Diablo 3, even single player? Uh, you need to be able to stay connected to the internet, but other than that, uh, no, not yeah. really for single player. Br- Brittany, knowing your bandwidth caps, you might run over your bandwidth really fast. <laughs> well, that's uh-huh. if she's playing multiplayer. She just has to stay well, connected. Well, I'm still single player. Like, I just want to experience the story. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, you just have to stay connected to the internet for that. If you okay, can well, stay how, how much bandwidth does it take up? I'm, I imagine not much because all you're doing is telling the server. Well, that yeah, for exist. single player, it may not be bad. Multiplayer, I'm pretty sure it'd take up quite a bit, but. Single player may not be that bad. I mean, yeah. Diablo is cool. Um, I've seen it. I've played it for, I believe it was Diablo 2. I played for a few minutes years back. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm a console gamer. Like, those games are cool for PC. Like, you cannot play a Diablo. Because they were rumoring and talking about Diablo on consoles. And it's like, those type of games just don't work on a console. You don't bring World of Warcraft, Diablo, to a console. That the, doesn't make sense. But That's not bringing Diablo to a console. But that's... That's the rumor. Th- it's, it's, a, it's not official. It's a rumor. And second of all, that would be stupid because the thing is, people that want to play Diablo are going to buy it on PC. I mean, I'm not even a PC gamer and if I wanted to play Diablo, I would buy it on my PC rather than the PlayStation 3. That just doesn't make... That's not a game where you use a controller. It, you I use, saw something about all the bugs on PC driving people to buy Diablo on iOS platforms. Uh, what? I didn't even know it was for iOS. I know it's yeah, on. I know it's on. Something. I know it's on. I know it's Mac. on Mac. Uh, yeah, I, like uh, iOS platforms, Mac. I, I know that the uh, system requirements aren't that big for it. Like most computers can run this. Uh, you need an Intel Pentium, two point eight gigahertz, a gig of RAM, and an NVIDIA GeForce seventy eight hundred. So I mean, that's that's like a computer from like two thousand seven. So. I mean, you know, it pretty light on the specs. Uh, it actually, I actually tested the lower uh, quality settings uh, to run it on my uh, crap video card. It runs pretty good. Um, yeah, I but I would say go to their website, download the starter edition, try it out, Brittany. If you is like it, free? yeah, it's free. The starter edition is free. 
Yeah, we'll have to wait till tomorrow to download it, because I'm already going over my bandwidth by talking to you all, you guys, right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you need to call a company, I'm not sure if they're out there, called Charter Communications. I looked it up earlier, I didn't really look up the location, but... Okay, they, they have unlimited bandwidth and 10 megabytes <laughs> I didn't per second. Know, I didn't know they still had home broadband, they had okay, bandwidth caps. You know caps. what, I want to answer a question that I read from, I think it was from Jay Sway right now, since we're talking about it. Yes, I do have a bandwidth cap. It, my internet sucks so much. I have a 10 gigabyte allowance. Okay, this is a really funny story. I had a Verizon MiFi first because Nick told me to get it. He was like, oh, yeah, my friends swear by this and all this stuff. <laughs> well, it, 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 well, it was better than what you had now, well, it really it? was. I, he was okay, before, thank you. Could, Making me seem like even, the dick. I couldn't even sign on Xbox Live. But anyways, so my mom sent it back for some reason. She told me she canceled the Verizon package like completely, but she did not. We had this cricket piece of shit for like two <laughs> oh, weeks. Oh, God. I had a cricket yeah, cell phone. Another, first thing I have ever. another Verizon Wi-Fi right now, which has the same, it's just the same exact thing that was from before like my mom knows nothing about technology nothing about anything like that and so she got the same exact thing that we had before so when I when we see this in the mail I was like mom really you just got the same thing that we had uh. and, yeah so I have another another Verizon Wi-Fi it honestly sucks so much and the reason that I can't get like Cox or AT&T or whatever you just said Bronson I don't know if I haven't tried that yet I haven't called them I don't think they, they have one they literally, at least in our area, go out to the middle of nowhere. And it's thirty bucks a month for ten megabytes per second unlimited bandwidth. See, that's that's pretty good because I have ten gig allowance each month, and we can't get AT and T or Cox or any of the big internet companies because there's this hill by our house that blocks the satellite signal or something. I am not sure. To our fellow listeners, if you guys have checked out Diablo Three, let us know what you guys think in the comments section. Are you liking the game besides the issues at launch? Uh, what are you guys thinking of the game? Are you liking it? Are you upset by it? Let us know what you guys think in the comments section. We'll be sure to interact and. Uh, yeah, anything, any type of uh, feedback you have in regards to the show, just let us know. Even if you don't have a question, just any type of feedback, let us know, and we'll be sure to get out to you. But uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, one quick thing before we end <laughs> Diablo talk, I'm sorry. Uh, you should add me on Battle.net, uh, Sarge1440 at Yahoo.com, because I totally want to play with all of you. So, yeah. There you go. Hit up Bronson on Diablo 3. Uh, Bronson wants uh, to play with you. Uh, that just sounds really that weird. That sounds really creepy. So before we head into uncensored access... Um, in my van, no. <laughs> there are two versions of the show. One You'll with play you. with my monk. What the hell? <laughs> no, dude, I'm a barbarian. I'll play with your witch doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, need for speed. <laughs> Oh, man, so there's word on the street that there's going to be a new Need for Speed in development. Need for Speed, <laughs> it, I have mixed feelings about Need for Speed. The original... Wait, you don't have mixed feelings because it's so much better than Forza, and I know you love Forza. Oh, so... no. Oh, well, no. There's... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my. Tongue. Yeah, see, Brittany just, she lost some points. Life. She lost some points right there. Oh, <laughs> bite your tongue, Stephen. Because this, this, this is the problem I have with Need for Speed. So the Need for Speed's like Pro Street, like the, back on the days of PlayStation 2, Need for Speed was incredible. As a fan of cars and customizing cars and stuff like that as I am, I loved Need for Speed on the PlayStation 2. This generation, I actually kind of like Need for Speed Shift. That was the game that actually transitioned from more of an arcade racer I like Hot Pursuit. to a simulation. But yeah, I, they uh, just, like, when it comes to simulation... Did you like the run? Uh, no, no. I hated the run. And this is the thing, to Forza, there's no comparison. Like, Forza absolutely destroys... Forza's controls freak me out. I always <sighs> crash into walls. Like, Need for Speed, I am just the because greatest... You, just because like, you, you suck can, at You Forza. can never beat me on Need for Speed, ever. No one could ever beat me. I am hey. the fucking greatest. I'm, like, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not even gonna be cocky right now. I am the greatest. But hey, Forza, guys. I'm like... <laughs> So she, so she likes Need for Speed better because she sucks at Forza. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, controls are these shit are different genres. These are different areas of the racing. Like it's hard to compare, in my opinion. Like sim and arcade, it's it's different. Um, I would just like to say that you're both wrong. And the best racing game of the generation is Burnout Paradise. Burnout Paradise was amazing. Yes. Burnout Paradise was amazing. What the amazing thing about Burnout Paradise? 
is they release so much content for free it was ridiculous like when they released they completely revolutionized the game with like bikes and stuff like that they didn't charge a single dime for that they extended the map burnout paradise brings back times man because i remember playing that god how long was that oh man that was like three four years ago i think playing that Damn. online with microphones dude i remember burnout paradise for hours on end online man that's Dude, actually my only platinum too, my only platinum trophy. Yeah, Ashton and I got the platinum trophy in it also. Hell yeah, that game was a blast. And then after I earned the platinum trophy, I'm like, why did I put myself through that? I don't get anything for trophies, and ever since then, I haven't cared about trophies. You know what? Things about trophies and achievements, you get just self personal about, satisfaction. I don't, I don't care about yeah. achievements either. They're just points and well, little I, icons. Like I, I prefer that's the. Why I love I, achievements because I mean, I just I am such. I just love achievements so, so much. They're, 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 agree with me on this. She's an achievement whore too. <laughs> self achievement, just, that's cool, but it's like, why are you gonna put yourself through hell just to earn achievement points? Or it's fun, the fun. You know what? I got two achievements left on Skyrim, and I got three left on Fallout Three, and those are my two favorite games. So, mm. um, I, I would just, you know, for me, uh, I love both systems. I prefer the trophy system slightly, just because of the different levels of trophies, um, and also because of the platinum. Oh. Uh, that said, like, I used, uh, I used to be really hardcore into achievement hunting. Uh, I've kind of toned down a little bit, uh, recently. Uh, I'm still, like, third amongst people I know in achievements, and same thing with trophies. Um, so, yeah, like, I don't know, it, it adds replay value to games, and it makes you play games in different fashions. Like, uh, I'm always gonna think back to that Geometry Wars achievement, where you have to play through the first minute without shooting. Uh, as an example of, like, how you can change gameplay. Right, right. Well, yeah, no, the achievements can serve a great purpose. It's when they're handled poorly that you, uh, that there's nothing really to be gained from them. Yeah. I, I mean, I really enjoyed the trophies in Ratchet and Clank because, like, they make you do everything in the game to get the platinum. Literally everything. As long as that everything is fun. And, I, like, I, I, it's, it's, I, it's, when, it's when, like, Gears of War does, like, kill... 100 or 1,000, or I forget which game it was. It was, it was like, get 1,000 sniper kills. Like, what? Oh, what are you doing? God, dude. I remember uh, back when I was in Achievement Horror, the original Gears of War drove me insane because I was trying to get 100 kills with every weapon, and then the Torque Bow one made me want to fucking cry because I'd go on a map and I'd instantly gun for the Torque Bow, and like I'd die instantly or someone else would get it. And like when I'd get it, I'd like, I like was praying to God I wouldn't get killed so I could at least get one kill with the damn thing. Um, yeah, I hated those. But like uh, a game like Ratchet and Clank where it's like collect all the ship upgrades or, you know, or finish the Coliseum. Like that stuff's fun. And, uh, you know, it's easy to do, it's, well, not easy, but, you know, it's the right level of difficulty. And Ratchet and Clank, for its collectibles, uh, they did something really cool with the collectibles where they told you, uh, what you were missing on each planet. So you knew what planets to go on to look for your stuff. Um. Which made the that way cooler, and same thing with Infamous. Like Infamous Two, uh, you can get a special power where it shows you where all the blast shards are. Oh yeah. So yeah. Uh, the response just was for Infamous Two, um, where you say it was, it was a really good game, and it was definitely a big step up for the next uh, from the first one. Like just with the upgrades. I mean, that was pretty much it. Just you know, just basically confirming what he said, and uh, like he said, you get the upgrade to see all the the blast shards. Uh, that was that was really really cool. I know because in the first Infamous they didn't have that, and finding that last br blast shard broke me as a human being. I was up till seven in the morning trying to find it. See, why do you put yourself through hell for something that you're not gonna get any benefit from? Like, I don't understand that. And because when yes, you get the when you get the do as achievement <laughs> Well, it's because. <laughs> It's because I will not let the game beat me. It's, exactly. It's, it's, it's like, no, fuck you. I am going to win. Uh, Plus, it's just, I think it's a little bit like, as being a completionist. Yeah, it's also just like in God of War when you're playing on normal and you die like a couple times. It's like, do you want to go down to easy? And you're like, oh, the game just called me a bitch. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and you're like, no. Really no, I will not be this game's bitch. I will fucking beat it on normal. God damn it. 
<laughs> I remember that coming up in God of War 3. I was like, hell no. Yeah, God of War did it. Uh, Explosion Man did it. Like, you, hey, you want to you you try it that easier? No. What, no. What, are you, what are you suggesting? What? Oh, yeah, man. Ninja Gaiden is even more insulting because if you say yes, the, uh, the original Ninja Gaiden Sigma, if you say yes, they put a pink ribbon on your arm. Right, yeah. <laughs> are you serious? No, yeah. Really hard. You guys should really try to play Skullgirls. I played it on Sleepwalk, which is the easiest, I swear, the easiest mode you can play it on. And I still got my ass kicked. First, I tried it on Difficult because I was like, yeah, okay, I'm a badass. This is a fighting game. Whatever. No. Fuck no. Dude, I, really I didn't even get in one punch and I was dead on Difficult. I'll say this. I you can ask Ashton. I love fighting games. Like I'm one of those people who like obsesses over frame rates and all kinds of shit like that with them. Um, and uh, that that game, uh, I got to play it at a friend's house. Dear God, it, I, I like after a little bit, I was able to play it on the normal difficulty and succeed about most of the time. But dear Christ, getting to that point was hard. Uh, yeah, man. It, was... it it doesn't help that uh that I don't own a fight stick and you know really could use one to play games like that. Um, but they're too damn expensive. Like I I would love to buy a fight stick, but they're just too expensive. I would love to have a fight stick because I've heard that on Skullgirls, fight sticks are mandatory because just like trying to move, like trying to do special moves and stuff like that on a basic like Xbox. I lose Xbox. So a basic Xbox controller doesn't really work out too much. And I was talking to Torrance from, I guess he's from the bit bag now. I don't really know if it, his site's still up. But uh, talking to him, he said, you really need a fight stick. And I talked to a lot of yeah, people. And they yeah. said, you need a fight stick for this game. It's <laughs> It was made by um, a tournament-grade fighter. So I, I imagine played- how hard it's going to be. I played a tournament grade fighter at PAX Prime last year in Ultimate Marvel's Capcom 3. They had this stage you could go on and play against him, and if you won, you got a free copy of the game and a bunch of free swag. The dude went. No, I only <laughs> killed. I did accomplish like what no one did in like you know ten battles, and that's kill one of his characters. Um, and the dude, I think, went on like a nineteen game win streak before the guy at Capcom made him put on a handicap. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, um, it was nuts. But the, like the food chain for like fighting game controls is at the bottom of the barrel is the Wii controller, then the 360, then the PS3, then a fight pad. You know because you can buy those fight pads. Then a uh, then a average quality stick, and then what you ideally want is one of those one hundred and fifty dollar tournament edition sticks. Uh, and what I actually really like about those is you can actually mount them to stuff uh, and make it like the arcade. Uh, I've actually contemplated buying those on several occasions, but they're just too got too much goddamn money, and I'm too stupid to build one. Uh, you know, which I which is why hopefully I'm hoping this year at PAX they have the panel on how to build those again because you know it's a lot cheaper if you build uh, your own stick and. Just god damn it! I I you know I can't afford to spend that much money for just one genre of games. <sighs> yep. And now you know. And now uh-huh. he's half the battle. Is this my super special yeah, show? Joe. So for those that enjoy fighting games, it sounds like a fight stick is a necessity. I'm personally not a fan of fighting games, although I absolutely love Mortal Kombat on the Vita. If you have a Vita, please be sure to check out Mortal that Kombat. Game- I, I played Mortal Kombat, like the console version last year. That game is great. It's kind of it's okay for like tournament, com- really like tournament competitive play. Like it's no Street Fighter or Marvel, but dude, it's a lot of fun. And I also like the fact that you that game's combos are like really easy to pull off. So the fact that you can actually play that game with a regular PlayStation controller is kind of nice. Versus uh, Marvel, which like. I was, there are points when I was playing Marvel where I'm just like, Christ, I need a stick so bad. Or I put, uh, you need to put it on simple mode or get a stick. Because that's that's the only way to play that game properly. Did they ever confirm Dead Space 3? Yes. Uh, it was, yeah, it was alongside the Need for Speed that they are working on Dead Space 3. Dead Space yeah, is another I, game I'm looking forward to. I don't think it's 
people like took a picture with uh, the banners and stuff. You know, they take a picture of the logo. But uh, they said that no one has confirmed it, but they did see, uh, you know, a trademark of it. Um, they, it was hanging out some kind of a store, I think, in, I don't know what country, some other country. Yeah, like there have been a lot of stores that have been, uh, like, releasing information about games way too early for some unknown reason, like miscommunication of sorts. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll hear about Dead Space 3 at EA's press conference at E3. I can almost promise you guys that. So. I enjoyed the first Dead Space, didn't enjoy the second one, so. Oh, the second one's great. Yeah, it really is. Like, I like all, uh, so far, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of mashed. I mean, I like the first one for the originality, but for the second one, is more action-packed. Yeah, um, yeah, that, yeah, that's my problem with it. Like, all these horror games are essentially just becoming action games. Like, I miss, you know, like, Silent Hill 1 and 2 and 3 and, like, Fatal Frame. Like, I miss that style of survival oh, horror game where it's about, you know, surviving. Well, well don't about. don't come at it as a survival horror game, or else you're always going to be disappointed. Come at it well, as an action yeah, game with a horror but like, game. Like, I come at it from an action game perspective, and I'm like, yeah, this is fun, but it's not, you know, like, a, like the shooting's not as good as a bunch of other games I've played. It's a, it's a fine game. I enjoyed the first one a lot. The second one had some really cool set pieces, but I couldn't get into it as much. Um, I'm not saying they're bad games. They're just not games for me. Um, okay, yes, not games for you. That yeah, is, for yes. Sure. <laughs> this said games for someone, we should really get back to the Need for Speed. I want to know what you guys think that the new Need for Speed will be like. I think they just need to make Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, be it like the, pl- the original like computer one or the new one they just released. Just keep making those. Stop making bad See, things. The problem well, is... That would mean, See, like, that would mean like Criterion not, developing. Not, Here's the problem, though, is um, the problem is, is that I played a lot of Need for Speed, and I stopped at Carbon because everything just went to crap, but the problem is, I feel with Need for Speed, is it doesn't know what it wants to do. Does it want to do another Most Wanted, Carbon, The Run type movie action thingy? Does it want to be a simulated racer, Need for Speed Shift? Or does it want to go back to its roots, Hot Pursuit? The problem is, is that Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit, that the new one. It's made by Criterion. It uses a licensed soundtrack. It just somehow doesn't feel like an doesn't even feel like an old school Need for Speed. Yeah, you can use a supercar to chase other dudes, but that still doesn't quite feel like. Did you play the run? No, I didn't. What was the name? Of, it was it was did most you, wanted. Did you was the, play the run at all? I played the demo of the run. And I wasn't that impressed. Um, yeah, I didn't yeah, like it either. I actually the run because I really want to play it. I just have so many games that I just want to play right now that I'm playing those first. But yeah, see, the thing is, is that I I think it's going to be really difficult for EA to just do, you know, go back to the old days because, um, let's see, everything up to Need for Speed. Let's see, Need for Speed: Hot Pursuit Two was good. The Underground series was cool. Most Wanted was um, okay. Car. Underground 2 remains my favorite Need for Speed. Which one? Underground 2. Underground 2 is really one. good. I like that one. Most Wanted was okay, but way too arcadey for my taste. Carbon it was sucks. Actually, I agree with you, Anthony. It was very arcadey. I really yeah. enjoyed uh, that the uh, it was Most Wanted that was put out recently. It was the it was the one that was uh, came out in 2010, I think, with the, oh, the, the police chasing you. That's Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit. Yeah, that's Hot Pursuit. Yeah, okay, so, remake. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, other but than- even then, but even then, that wasn't exactly what I call old school Need for Speed. That was more like um, from Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit two from two thousand one. Still, like, I personally don't need an old school Need for Speed. I, w- I just want a fun Need for Speed. That is my criteria. Is it fun? But, okay. but like yeah. the problem is like if they try and do like a sim game, they end up being you know compared to Forza, yeah, and then and then yeah. like they look like crap. And then if they try and do an arcade game, they get compared to Burnout, and they look like crap. So I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they just end up looking like a giant pile of feces. <laughs> I, it, yeah. it'll, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see them to to see how they try to find their place because they're at the right yeah. place, at the right time with Underground Two. 
Uh, yeah, but see, since, since underground, then, since everyone else has moved on culture wise and in, in other aspects, and burnout has taken over. Yeah, this is, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, Need for Speed doesn't know what it wants to be, and I think that's just one of the, its main problems. It's just you got three different developers on it. Criterion's like trying to go old fashioned, and you have whatever that's doing the run. What do you mean it doesn't want? It doesn't know what it wants to be. Well, first off, you had Need for Speed Shift, which is trying to be a racing simulator. That's much it's more. It's trying nice. to be like Forza, morally. Yeah. Then you have Need for Speed: The Run, which is trying to be this action movie, cross country kind of thing. And then you have Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, which is trying to you know go back to the old days and you know make everybody enjoy the whole idea of driving fast and having cop cars matching your speed and that kind of stuff. So it's like that's three different visions for need for speed it's yeah and i feel like they have three different branches and they could eat they could go all ways with that those branches they can they can keep making any games that are just like that they can make most wanted they can make the run two. they can make anything like i think they could keep making those and make a lot of money off of them and they could make them better but i just think they're like you said they're kind of confused of, as to what they're doing right now yeah but, so what uh, do you i mean anthony since you you're talking more about the subject than, than anybody else, what do you think the new Need for Speed would be like? Um, I really don't know. I haven't played any of the recent games. I stopped at Carbon because after that I gave up on the franchise almost completely. But um, um, uh, I really do don't think know. Also, one of their older games, or do you think it'll be something brand new? I am honestly. I'm thinking the run too. The run didn't do that well. The run critically. But I'm thinking they're going to well. try to make it a lot better, and they're going to try to improve it so much that it'll be a lot better. I don't know. It's just. Yeah. I think they I'm had really... an interesting idea with the run, but and if they got enough money from that, they could potentially uh, make a very improved game uh, off of yeah. that if they if they decided to continue with that. Yeah, at this point, I really don't know where they go. If uh, I don't know how much they actually listen to their fans, but as far as I know, the fans are there's like two groups of fans. You got ones like me who love old school Need for Speed, mm-hmm. and then you've got the underground group who need who you know, say we want an underground three. And I don't think I would that love it. an underground three. I am not even kidding you. I, I would, would just blank. I'd my be really interested. Three. I'd be really interested, but. Um, um, Question: Underground was the one that was at the 360s launch with all that FMV no. uh, video, right? Which no, one was that? That's, that's most wanted. Okay, most yeah, Underground Two I, was like one of those. Was, on I, the P, was I remember playing on the PS2? It was an amazing. I game. would love for them to do uh, most wanted with that terrible FMV again, just because I find well, it that's funny. <laughs> Razor Callahan, baby. Razor oh. Callahan, yeah. The dude who was, like, sabotaged your car. That guy is such a dick. He just sabotages your car and just like, ah, yeah, I win. And then drives off and ruins your car and then, and then like puts a razor on the side of your car and you're just like, oh, I'm going to so kill that guy. That so whole thing is so dumb. But the thing is they're only going to make that like with the intention of making that dumb. And once they've made the intention and are aware that it's dumb, that game's ruined. So that's not going to work. Yeah, exactly, because they made the first one like, oh, it's so serious. And, oh <laughs> they my actually tried God. to make it serious, and it was so dumb, it was funny. It was so <laughs> There's great. no way it's going like, to work. Like, that's the, that and the Hot Pursuit games are the only Need for Speeds I've ever liked. Like, yeah, otherwise... Well, again, Underground 3, uh, Underground 3 would actually be really good. Uh, imagine, like, an Underground 2 on current consoles with improved technology. That could oh, be... Holy shit. Holy I shit. Just, I just amazing. think... I just think that... The, the guys who developed Underground, they timed the release of that game perfectly. And right when that game came out, everyone was like trying to put in huge stereos in their cars and retarded exhaust pit p- noise. That's the issue, yeah. You could hear from a mile like, away. Everyone's modding the car thing on big rims. I mean, they still do it today, but back in 2004, that was... Well, again, they would have to... They do, uh, speaking of, the game that took Underground 2's place is uh, Burnout Paradise. Where it's this open world and you drive around and do missions and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and then and then Midnight Club Three did that in two thousand five. And speaking of awful uh, tuner racing games released in two thousand four, anybody remember Street Racing Syndicate? Anyone like a sequel to that? Yeah, 
Street yeah. Racing Syndicate. Why do I feel like I've played that before? Let me look it up. You... I remember seeing it on shelves and being like, eh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Quinn and I bought that game, and God, that was a mistake. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I didn't play it. Yeah, no, it's all. I did. I, 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 I did play this one tuning racing game they called called Redline. Had its own theme song or something like that. I forgot the name of the, the full name of the game. Basically, what it was is, yeah, you have to control your clutch pedal. And the problem was is that it was so badly designed, you couldn't find a race that didn't involve you losing immediately. And the fact that if you didn't know how to control your clutch, you pretty much broke your car within a mile of your garage trying to get the car moving so that was terrible yeah um, i want to see i want to see a true sequel to burnout paradise like i love that game and i love the music for that game i love that game every time every time when you started that game it plays guns and roses paradise, paradise city, city and i'm city. just I'm like yeah. oh, that is such a great way to start that game every time. Dude, yeah, that time. that and uh, whenever that song comes in on my way to work, A, I feel like speeding, and B, it instantly <laughs> puts me in a good mood even though I'm going Ross said it is a good thing your car's slow because you can't speed anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah, dude. No, it, it's not even a joke, dude. Like I, I was going up uh, McCarran to the GameStop on Ridgeview Plaza. Everyone not from Reno is going, what the fuck is he talking about? Um, and you know that big hill? Like yep. I just, I, I'm doing pedal to the floor, and it's like barely going sixty up that hill. Oh my god, dude! It just no. Uh, and like on a on a flat like flat highway, I can probably get it up to seventy if I really try. <laughs> you mean if your car really tries, right? Yeah, like <laughs> if it's, it's like all right, fine. I'll give you ten more horsepower. <laughs> Yeah, no. Give me a break here. I'm old. <laughs> 1984. <laughs> yeah. What is the next subject? EA. Yeah, maybe we should. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Finally, you're seeing your Call of Duty lawsuit. Oh, yeah. Thank God. The Activision can go. It's been go two years. It's been two years. Three, actually. That happened in 20. It's been three? Yeah, it happened at the end of two thousand. I'm not the end of 2009, early 2010, so you can go either way. Oh, man. So we so have to say that. <laughs> so this is the lawsuit in which the guys that the guys left Infinity Ward made Respawn Entertainment join with the EA and Activision. It's like, uh-uh, you can't do that lawsuit. That was the story, right? Yeah, basically Activision's being a bunch of jerks, and Wes and Pell and a bunch of employees were like, well... You guys, you guys have been jerks for the last time. We're gonna leave, and then uh, is this why Robert Balling left? Uh, um, it's just we live in such a sue happy society. Every day is a new lawsuit by some major corporation against another major corporation. One moment you got Motorola banning Xbox sales in Germany, and next thing you know, Apple's coming up with another way to sue someone over patents. Everyone's <laughs> greedy and out to fuck each other for money. That's why. It's when they have all the money in the world, that's what I do not understand. When you have all the money in the world, why Apple the fuck do so you much sue money. somebody like, for a billion? It's like, do you know, do you know what I would do with just like give me a million and I'm happy? Yeah, these these companies like think a hundred thousand dollars is like fucking nothing. Like I th like if you told me you were giving me a hundred thousand dollars, the way I live my life, uh, I could probably you know like live on a hundred thousand dollars for like five years but uh, you gotta think as also you gotta live the way they're living the companies are living i mean i'm sure they're living pretty high end right now yeah they're, they don't wanna, okay, they're not gonna yeah. stop that they don't want to stop that so yeah, they're gonna but, settle they're gonna like fight about any little ounce of money whether it be like probably not ten thousand like a hundred thousand to a hundred million yeah if they were to just like you know tone it down to even like living an upper middle class lifestyle god forbid uh, you know, they would fucking have more than enough money, like three, you know, up to ten times as much. You know, if they were to live my lifestyle, dear God. In upper middle I mean, class, yeah. in upper middle class, a hundred thousand dollars is good. You don't have to work for a year with a hundred thousand dollars. 
pretty much everything. You pretty much can pay your bills, do whatever for a year. Yep. It's it's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, th- these guys. Somehow but- I feel like Apple. It's like they have this huge piggy bank. I'm thinking they're probably saving that for the time when they get in trouble. Because I'm pretty sure every yeah. major corporation at one point in their life has hit a slump, and need and you know they have to raid the piggy bank to you know survive longer and figure out what to do next. I'm thinking probably Apple's building up this massive piggy bank so that way they have a lot of time to figure out what's wrong. You know, <laughs> they they uh, actually uh, did a uh, study like what Apple could do with all of its money, and one of them was successfully clone Steve Jobs 200 times. <laughs> Yeah, they've got like $120 billion just sitting in a bank. Like, what could they not do? Like, really, let's be honest here. Um, so, yeah. But, I mean, I don't think this is why Robert Bowen quit. I think really the whole reasoning behind Robert Bowen is they were restricting what he could do. He wanted to do something different. Activision told him, no, you're doing another Call of Duty. He's like, all right, fine, screw you guys. I'm starting my own company. I'm doing my own thing. I think that's pretty much the whole story behind Robert Bowen. I respect them for it. So, I mean, Activision, do they have money? Of course they've got money. But only A because of, only because of Call of Duty, though. Let's be honest. They're a Guitar Hero franchise. I mean, what's happened with Whoa. that? Prototype. Prototype. Well, I, the fact that they've acquired Blizzard, that, yeah, yeah. They have money there as well. But outside of the Blizzard division, I mean, Guitar Hero has just fell off the face of the earth. Yeah. Prototype, uh, it's all right, but you, it's you know not. What? I realize that the guitar here really actually has fallen off the face of the earth. It's all Completely. rock band now. Completely. Rock, Completely. Like, guitar is gone. Like, I, have, I haven't realized that. Like, I'm not a big partaker in rock band or guitar hero, any, any kind of hero shit at all. So I really just. Wow. <laughs> well, like, I love rock band, but, like, after rock band 3. <laughs> There's no need to make another rhythm game. You have all the main instruments plus harmonies. You have all the music from the first two games that you would import over. And now they're just releasing weekly DLC. The only time they're going to need to make a new rock band is when the new consoles come out. And then they're just going to release it with all the fucking, you know, the keyboard, the drums, the guitars, and the, the harmony mics. And then they're going to say, okay, here's it, it. It carries all the DLC from the old games. And we're going to continue putting music out. Happy day, um, and that's and like that's the problem there. Uh, you know that's why like no one wants to buy a thousand different Guitar Hero discs. Um, same thing with SingStar. Like you don't need to release another SingStar disc. Why? Because you can just download all the songs. You know. What is this new thing learned... called Rocksmith, where you actually learn how to play the guitar? Well, yeah, that that's actually that, well, that's, that's a, a step that's forward. A, that's a not teaching a tool. huge leap. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's why it, I'm sorry. You both talking at the same time. It's a teaching tool for guitar. It's like a it's like education software, but on a okay, console. Okay, so it's not like a guitar hero or rock band. No, it's just like, more like a not teaching really, no. thing. On, okay. Um, the thing is, is that unless the next uh, big um, step forward to plastic instruments happen. Probably not going to see music games get the huge leap again. Man, we I could, much- well, we're in the middle of another huge leap, and that is dance games. Like, if you look at the charts, uh, like, uh, what? Dance games are good. Come on. Yeah, dance games oh, rock. Dance, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm dance is- Central oh, is the shit. Dancing. I hate dance Central. I hate any dancing. I just don't like to dance. That's why. I mean, I like to just. Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> not dance, like, not like, like to dance. dance. They don't dance, and so I didn't dance. Copied them my whole life. I played with Legos, Hot Wheels, that kind of shit. I never danced. I was never one of those girls that would just prance around with my Barbies and danced around with them. Like, oh my god, no, you don't. You, you yeah, guys can play. dance. You can dance just for fun. Yeah, but I don't really like dancing at all. I mean, I'm, but I like. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Da- well, the thing is, is that I didn't like dancing at all either. And I'm like, okay, I'll try Dance Central. And it's a lot of fun. Right? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, like you, you or basically or can, just like, just a guy on the screen. You want to try it, and you guys might prove me wrong. But other than right now, fuck that. But like, here's the thing: you got to remember, like, dance games, like everybody dance and Dance Central were both like top ten sellers for the year last year, and they were those games are huge. Like those games are That's so big. Yeah, that that YouTube video. Everybody dance. <laughs> 
But still, like yeah, dan- that was an awful presentation. But <laughs> yeah, like you you don't like dance games. A lot of people <laughs> like dance games, and I like dancing. So you know, there you go. Yeah. Uh, All right. So dancing yeah. games. So we had a lot of Call of Duty lawsuit to dancing games. Only only yeah. on unscripted access can we get on that kind of path. And that's Summer. pretty much why it's unscripted. Yeah, we've yeah. had a lot of Dance Central footage on the Gamer Access over the past year. Just watch Bronson's Dance Central Slim Down. Well, seriously, have... Dance Central. We had we had E3 2011. We had. Oh God. Don't oh, wait, no. Never mind. I thought you were talking about PAX, sorry. No, that's coming up. We had E3 2011, um, where I was out there and doing Dance Central. Uh, that was to Dance, like a G6, I remember that, Dance to like a G6. That's a, I love that song. In that and game. then we had Bronson, who had his own dedicated show for like a month and a half <laughs> to straight Dance <laughs> yeah, Central. Yeah, whatever happened to that show? Like, why did you stop? Well, I well, lost 10 pounds and said, fuck it. <laughs> well, what Bronson <laughs> said on the first episode is, we're going to see if you can lose weight. And Bronson is going to do this program over a course of a month. And we so, went you know what? Six I weeks. wish you would have done it. I honestly, I wish you would done the episode until you got like ripped, like Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now I'm dieting and I've lost another twenty pounds. So if I add Dan Central to that, I probably will lose weight faster. But um, on this should. episode I mean, on the Gamer Access, you wanna the Gamer Access wants you to see wants to see you look like Ryan Reynolds because Ryan Reynolds had a shit. I'm not going to get that in shape, but... <laughs> you know, uh, I've got an idea. You, you, you know what? On. You know what? I, I, everyone who's listening to this, tell me if you want us to bring back me dancing. If you want to, to bring that back, comment, and we'll do it. And we'll do it until I'm back in football shape. So, oh, I'll hit... Ross, that's going to be really hot. What was your football summer. shape? Uh, I was 200 pounds, could... Bench 225, squat 380, uh, could power clean 185, and I and uh, you can look on my Facebook to see a picture of what I looked like. Uh, it's me next to the Homer Simpson no, picture. I think you already sent that us a long time ago. Yeah, so I, I yeah, if you want to look it up, just go look in my profile pictures, and it's me I can next imagine. to the Simpson picture. I can imagine a new segment DJ on this week on the Gamer Access. Bronson's on the new episode of Forced Enjoyment. Bronson on P90X. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> no, oh my Forced god. Insanity, insanity workout is so much better than P90X. And I'm, I'm about to start doing that, honestly. Honestly, I'm just going to start, you know, I'm going to start weightlifting again. And then I'm going to start doing the Reno run every day. Which that's, I don't know what the Reno run is. Well, I'll tell you what the Reno run is after this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, you need a big open field to do it and a jump rope. Uh, and it takes three minutes at the longest, but it you are totally dead afterwards. It's pretty See, much a... I, al- I run almost every day. I'm super skinny, which I don't understand why I don't have abs, but I fucking want abs. It, it's pretty much a Anyways, sprint. Anyways, it's Because I, I, so. <laughs> uh, I, I did track. I was a sprinter, so... Gaming to... related. What is our next topic? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it stuff. for the news. Um, anything? Well, okay. else? Then. Anything else? Uh, anyone wants to bring up before we hit the questions? Yeah, I, uh, it's... See, I have one. If you guys can hear me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I was actually discussing this uh, already, but with what about Dante's new hair? And Devil. You want to bring body? that up right now? I really do. It's fine. It doesn't bother me. I liked him better yeah. before, but it, I don't really well, care. Like, when you change the character that's been there for so long, it just kind of, it doesn't set right sometimes. Yeah, it was just like the whole infamous, infamous 2 thing. When they first yeah. showed what the what Cole McGrath or their new character might look like, people freaking flipped out. Then people, they changed him. Yeah, then yeah. they changed him back. So, I mean, we could see the same thing happen with Devil May Cry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is, you know, like... Let's say, like, I don't, I don't know, to give a perfect example, like, you know, if Batman changed his whole suit to blue, people would not like that. And Actually. That would be really weird. I don't know what yeah. you're about to say, Bronson, but Batman with blue armor would be fucking weird. I was just about to say before. that, I was just like to say, there's been, like, several so different crazy. bat suits. That's what I'm saying, Batman is crazy. Yeah. 
Like, I, you yeah, know, you know, just, it, it's 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 small. You know, I'm researching this right now, but it's, from what I know, it's it's a small change, in, and it's it it is an issue, like for people who are who are hardcore fans of the Devil May franchise. But if the game turns out well, I mean, it shouldn't be that that uh, it shouldn't be that important well, as long as it works well, yeah, out. It, it's still a little unsettling. It, oh, it is. Know. Like uh, infamous, infamous too. Uh, there is a change that you notice, and I remember being bothered by that for a while. But uh, after a while, I got used to it and was okay. So I'm hoping the same thing happens with this. Uh, this okay. is a bit, a slightly more dra- uh, drastic change than infamous. Uh, so it will be interesting to see what they do. Uh, like, have you no- have you noticed any gaming movements? Because that seems to be real popular this year. Any gaming movement uh, movements for uh, or petition for I'll, I, we want his hair changed back? God, fuck gamer entitlement so fucking hard. <laughs> God, I mean, I'm, I'm in a gameplay right now, and it looks the whole thing looks like uh, Devil May Cry, except I am missing his red trench coat along with the hair. So this, yeah, actually, I'm I'm starting to get bothered by this a little. So- Sometimes I'm watching a a preview, um, a trailer. Oh, yeah, well, he just put on a trench coat, and I guess part of it's red. Which, yeah. okay. That's what I'm saying. It's like he's wearing like a torn up white shirt instead of just nothing, you know, underneath it. Is he wearing it. a wife beater? He's wearing yeah, a wife beater. Uh, he's got this black with a little bit of red trench coat on, and then he's got this short black hair instead of his longer white hair. All right. Well. Oh, that doesn't bother me too much. Uh, Cigarette, so you know, like, you know, uh, after Devil May Cry Four, I guess that series could have used the change. It was one uh, game. It was one game, and and three, the the one immediately before was an amazing. Yeah, uh, but the one amazing. was kind of crap. So I mean, and but, like, what, what was like revolutionary? Uh, people wished it. it was amazing. Or was okay. Um, yeah. Well, what would you? What do you guys think about like Assassin's Creed Three? I've been wanting to talk about that for a while. Uh, I really hope they fix the controls because the thing that has hindered me from enjoying that as much as I possibly could the control like crap. Uh, like uh, I want to control like Crackdown or Influence and control that way and. All righty, so we just lost Bronson and Anthony thanks to the wonderful internet, but we're going to go ahead and continue with our questions of the week. So I'm going to hand it over to Brittany and we'll go from there. Okay, we got some not questions. We have Jelly Jelly saying, No sleep to Brooklyn, which I'm <laughs> pretty sure you just the intro to. Jay Sway. Way to represent the Beastie Boys. And yes, I do have a bandwidth cap, which I talked about earlier. And a new user who I've never heard of before said, Tanto, E3 is looking to be the worst. Microsoft always fails them. It's up to Nintendo and third parties and Sony to bring the games. Do you really get? Do you really think that? I think he's saying that no. possibly because Microsoft came out and said that this E3 is going to be focused more on the multimedia functionality such as apps, television, stuff like that, more so than games. Of course they're gonna be showing Halo Four. I mean, they have to show Halo Four. Um, oh yeah. I already said that they're gonna show it. But I think and I can kinda agree to be honest with you, I'm expecting Microsoft to have the worst conference this year. Out of these three, I don't expect it to be bad, but out of Microsoft, really? Nintendo and Sony, I think they're gonna have the worst out of the three personally. They don't have, yeah, they don't have you know too much to show. They got they got Halo Four. They'll have some third party stuff, but I mean, they will be showing off multimedia, maybe something to do with the interface. Although they just updated that, so I don't know. Um, and then they have Connect, which they are still committing to. That is uh, still being a thing. Uh, so they'll want to push that as well, and that's going to alienate a lot of hardcore gamers. But it's doing a lot of great business for Microsoft and. Uh, and so other than, you know, showing Halo 4 and a couple third-party games, they're going to continue uh, the way they had the last few years because that's done well for them. They really don't have much to offer, though. Like, I mean, I agree. They, don't, they really don't have much on the table this year. They, I don't, I don't know what they were working on, but they weren't doing their normal, you know, they weren't bringing their normal amount to 
the consumers and what they have to show for it. So, right. Though it will be interesting to see uh, how Sony fares because oh, they're going Sony's, to have to be showing Sony's off. Conference. They're going to, have to be showing off the Vita, uh, and you know oh, the potential for this could be really great. But there's also a great potential that they could fall flat on their face. And they got to do it right. They have to do it right, and and yeah. it's it's not looking super great already. You know the Vita's not doing well, uh, despite being an amazing piece of machinery. Uh, the games aren't there yet. That's what this conference will be for, uh, and and they got to bring it, or else that that whole gamble with the Vita is looking to be, uh, you know, set towards failure. And in the position that Sony is in, that they really can't afford that. So I think the most pressure is on Sony right now. Oh yeah, I, I think Nintendo is in the highest spot easily. Yeah, I think Sony definitely has the uh, most expectations for E3 this year. Yeah, and, and then Nintendo, you know, they've got successful 3DS with games coming out for it now, and the Wii U, which um, I know I've personally been really warming up to the idea of that controller uh, and all and the po- the possibilities and potential with that. Uh, I have this- loved the Wii U ever since I first saw it. I was really disgusted with it at first, and I can't really describe why. You were disgusted with it? Yeah. Uh, I I was I was expecting a, a you know a jump to the next generation. This was Wii HD to me. Uh, it seemed like a weird well, transition. Is, Brittany, you got to keep in mind they. But it's kind of Wii HD. It's just kind of like a Wii controller, basically a Wii HD controller. Is what I think of it, but I do think it's really awesome at the same time. Yeah, they haven't they haven't got a chance to play it with it though. That's that's right, the exactly. difference. We got the we got the, we got to check it out at CES and. I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's not revolutionary, like, oh, my God, but it is a pretty cool console. I'm actually kind of impressed, so. Well, no, and, and again, you know, as the months wore on, I really warmed up to the idea, and I haven't even held it in my hands, but looking at it, uh, imagining playing games with it, and in regards to what uh, Nintendo has been doing with the past couple consoles, I like what this one's doing. I just want, I just need to see games for that as well. Uh and and they have great first party stuff that they could use. Uh, again, Nintendo has the best spot. They they have the easiest uh, uh, conference of the three, of the three big ones. I think. And then the Xbox is pretty much coasting with by uh, putting out Connect and all that. Um, and then yeah, Sony's got a big challenge ahead of them. Well, maybe they're keeping something under their sleeve or something for you know for Microsoft. They, they all yeah. Like, you know, it's not like them to be this short compared yeah, to... Yeah, Microsoft tends to always have something for the end. Um, like Halo 4 yeah. last year, no one, no one expected an announcement of Halo 4. Um, so that was yeah. all, along with the Xbox Slim. That was... Uh, well, that was kind of rumored beforehand. I mean, that was rumored, but that, that was that was interesting. Like, I, that was a weird... Well, yeah, because Red Ring I, I, Death, I, 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 did I, you make it I'm smaller? It. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the... Uh, I don't know. There was a lot of rumors up to that, but like Halo Four, there there was no talks about a Halo Four, and then bam, they just ended off the conference with that megaton announcement. I'm the sure leak, the the yeah, leak or before it didn't help, but yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is I'm sure they got something just ready to shock everybody. They have to, or else because they they they'll, they know that they're not going to be you know very much competition for the others, or not really competition, but you know maybe a popularity contest, if you will, but. Well, they yeah. have to have something because they got to have you know because they know they they can't just bring what people know they they because you know I'm sure they saw how how much it took people by surprise when they announced Halo Four so right that was maybe. that was a big headline uh, and yeah I, I, someone on the last podcast I forget who but it, it really bothered me it was I, I think it was Bronson said uh, that they were that Microsoft was going to end with Halo Four that's not a big reveal we know what halo 4 i would love to see more of halo absolutely i i am all for that game it looks cool but to mm-hmm. end your conference on it when uh your lineup seems kind of small and you know there's the future that there there's all the rumors are coming up now uh does does you gotta consider what's good business and what's not like i don't I can't see them ending on Halo 4. They have to have some sort of shocking moment. This is D3. That's where yeah. that happens. Yeah, that's so. what I'm saying. Is that they got to have something else. They they can't just, you know... I mean, people so, know now that they just catch yeah. people by surprise again. Or at least, a, a, you know, avail something, something completely, you know, off the wall. Like, maybe 
I don't know. Maybe, it'd be really cool if they had like a whole new connect, like maybe like a smaller one or a smaller well, I one. I don't know. Yeah. Like, just gotta, they like, gotta have something though. Like <laughs> they, they will have something. They will have something. Yeah. One that does not watch you when you're sleeping. Uh, yeah. I can't trust them. Freaks me out. Does it not creep you guys out at all? Yeah, I it does because like, you can triangulate that thing and government can see. You face it right. away. I highly doubt there's people at Microsoft. Ooh, let's see what Brittany Parks is doing while she sleeps. I don't know. I highly, I, mean, I don't know. My Facebook page a while back, which was saying that Microsoft can watch you from your Connect, and it really freaked me out. So now every time I look at my Connect when I'm sleeping, I'm like, oh shit. Because <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I'm not gonna say how I sleep, but I don't want anybody to see me how I sleep. It's really weird. It, it's I, I really seriously seriously doubt that that's a thing, but uh, it could be in the I understand why why you, when you have a camera even when it's off or unplugged a camera pointing at you is weird. It's crazy. Like, yeah, it's like, scary. My, my half the time freaks me the fuck out because I'm thinking, wait, somebody could be watching me on this right now. Like I could totally be like doing anything I wanted to do right now. And <laughs> <laughs> Even if that, yay naked yoga what? for Microsoft. Do I want? No. Nah, I said yay naked yoga for Microsoft. Yeah, let me do that. Let me just get on that. <laughs> you need to cleanse your soul Microsoft, a little bit. Not Sony for Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> no, I, I know they they were trying to they were trying to make a sex game for Connect like oh, in I'm Germany. Sure they like, are. Sweet. Go. What? Yeah, right about that. Germany for a yeah. while, or something like that. Yeah, yeah right just, about that, but nothing just, like that would pass in America. <laughs> There's um, so basically like a like a porn game for Xbox. You just have yeah, sex yeah. on the Connect, and then it rates you based on porn stars. Like your sex exactly. is five point five percent good. Oh. <laughs> 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 Oh, I so want to say something, but I'm not. Let's continue. Let's, yeah, I don't like, I don't like this subject. Oh, Let's my move. God. Wow. <laughs> Let's continue, please, please, anyway, before I do say it. Brittany, what's the next question? Oh, God. Thank you for the question. What, what is the last question that we just answered? We're talking uh, about we Microsoft deserve... having the worst E3 presents. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, neither of them are present for this question, but the question is from... Um, Nosnorb, N O S. No, N-O-S-N-O-R-B. that one. That one. Bring it up next week. That we're bringing up next week when Charles is on. When Dennis is on the okay. show. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Jace Ray wants to know. I think only Nick, Brittany, and Ashton can answer this question. But I come. I'm kind of curious as to how everyone compares to how they act online, to how they act in real life. Uh, I don't really think we act much different. I haven't seen anything as far as acting. Much. I know you guys different. You guys are different. I mean, Ashton, you're a little bit more open in person. <laughs> really? You're not. Yeah, I think you're you're a lot more fun than in person than you are on the internet. Oh, I was thinking the exact opposite when I when I read that question. It's like, oh man. Well, yeah, when I, I first I fucked up that whole pack piece showing. I was really so sad. introverted there. But. You came out of your shell, and you were way more awesome than I could ever imagine you on in person. Like that's why, like you and Nick, both of you, I connect more with you guys on podcasts now because I've met both of you. Ah, oh, yeah, that's that's what's gonna make an eventual uh, meetup for the whole website at like an E3 or PAX Prime. So yeah. awesome. We definitely need to all meet, and I think I don't know how you guys think of me, how I act from internet to person. I think I'm crazier in person. Well, yeah. Since you brought since so, you yeah. since you brought it up, I'll go ahead and say that. Yeah, on the podcast, crazy. on the podcast, it can tend to be a little bit limited um, due due to certain things. But uh, yeah, um, I'll leave that there. <laughs> I think, honestly, if somebody were asked me to describe myself, I would say I'm a riot. <laughs> That's a good word for it. That's, sure. That's a good one. Yeah, right. when that person a couple weeks ago asked one word to describe each other, that would have been a good word to describe Brittany. Right. Uh, I did not think about that. I don't know. If, was I on the on the podcast that time? No, you were not. Okay, well that. then. 
I remember reading the questions because I thought I was going to be on the podcast, but I don't remember that question. Yeah, it was like two weeks ago. Someone asked if you could, if you only, if you only had one word to describe each other, what word would you use? Well, would you guys describe me as Riot? <laughs> sure. I would at the time. I just said Dova Kings. It was the first thing that came to mind. Do- yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Well, that's just because of my tattoo. Well, work. You're a Dova King without the tattoo. You're Dova yeah, King. Yeah, you freaking. I am. I mean, Jim, you're a lock. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to say about Nick uh, when I went to PAX he's, Nick's Nick like I, I, that, um, when I went and met him and the way he talks and the way he, he says he's Nick exactly <laughs> as you hear him on the podcast that, that is exactly it, it, yeah he puts himself all on the on the website and in his videos. That's that's him. That's who he is. Yeah, I'm not afraid of a camera by any means. I'm not. Af- I'll do anything. Like I'm just. I'm. I'm outspoken. I'll leave it there. Um, sure. And Good I, talent to have. But yeah, Brittany, you said there's something that you think I'm different. How am I different? I'm just curious. Did I say that? Yeah, you said you said you that Ashton and both I are different online. And just person. like probably one third percent, and I I don't think it's like. In your professionalism, I think it's just in like how you guys interact with me, friend type. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't understand what you're saying Kinda. though. Damn it! Okay. <laughs> like whenever you guys aren't being all professional and everything, you guys are more relaxed. You guys are more fun. You guys are really cool to hang out with. But whenever we're like going to interviews, which you should be, which you both should be, and I am too. But we all should be like very professional, and I think Nick is the most professional out of all of us. Okay, and yeah. He just yeah, acts sure. like he acts like Mama Goose, and it's really cool. Mama Goose, Mama Goose, Mama Goose. Mama Goose. You are Mama Goose. I like, am Mama Goose. I mean, okay, wow. let's say Papa, Papa Bear, Sorry. whichever one you prefer. <laughs> Mother Hen. Mama yeah. Goose. <laughs> He doesn't want to be called mother. He doesn't want to be anything like girly. Yeah, so. I prefer yeah. not Mama Goose. <laughs> <laughs> I, Sorry, you just came to my mind. Yeah, I can, I can Some, see where someone has to be. Someone has to be that poised, you know, motherly, uh, you know, ma- pa- yeah, parents like. I can understand where Bernie's yeah, coming from there. Or- from there, I mean, pretty much. I mean, I'm. I consider myself fun. I'm outgoing, but at times, like, I understand at certain times, like. There needs it, you may feel like acting a certain way, but you just got to put a professional persona on, and that's just that's just the way things are. Um, but I mean, outside of events, I always like to have my fun, and I think, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that they showed with us. <laughs> I mean, some of it was caught on video, a lot of it was not caught on video. Yeah. Um, that's one of the I'm rules of this industry. Of you don't take a you don't take video. a camera to the. Um, parties because the craziest stuff happens and you just you don't put God, there were a sorry at that party well yeah know, was, Anna, sorry you know, walking around you know you know those guys that i was talking to you about nick yeah that's one of their best friends what's that wow, that's crazy that was one um the uh what is her name Start with an m the asari in mass effect 2 and she's kind of she has a cameo in mass effect 3 yeah oh so uh, you so you knew the girl that was cosplaying no, I didn't know her, but the guys that I, you know, the guy that I sold his glasses from him. Oh yeah. Was like, oh, I'm gonna wear your glasses. Blah blah. blah. That was one of his really good friends, and. Oh, that was I got you. I don't. I forgot. I don't remember. That. She pulled that off so well. God, I don't remember. That was an amazing name. cosplay. It was. It was such an amazing cosplay. It's that actually... and Cobra Commander. Did you guys see Cobra Commander there? Oh, I did not. That was an amazing Cobra Commander. Oh. God, I wanted to get a picture, but my phone is shit. That's something that we have to do at E3 is I need a better camera so we can take some pictures. I'm going to bring my mom's camera next time. But the next question is, what could Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo announce at their press conferences during E3 this year that would encourage you to claim each company the winner of the best E3 showing? And that's from Jenny Smith. That's a great question. Oh, wow. Um, that is a great question. Microsoft. And of course it's from Jenny, but yeah. Microsoft, <laughs> what could they announce? Uh, more exclusive games, because um, I feel that's really the only thing Microsoft lacks right now is exclusive oh, right. games. Um, well, what specifically would they have? PlayStation is killing them with the exclusive games this year. 
well, not the only this year, this generation. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. the last of here. the last of us is going to be a really good game. Thank you, the last of us. Oh my, oh my yeah, god, I cannot. Be we all it's really gonna think it's going to be a great game. We all agree that, yeah. The Last of uh, Us, I cannot wait. It's coming from Naughty Dog. I exactly. mean, come on. Nick acts like all of us hate PS3. I, or Play <laughs> I don't hate PlayStation. I love PlayStation. I just think that Microsoft is better. To tell you but the truth, like, year, most, of, of, most of the gamer... They've kind of gone downhill because they're in, the only exclusive game they have coming out is Halo 4. Most of the gamer access is actually like more more PS3 leaning than 360. I, I think. I know. I feel like the only one that is like more Xbox. Like you're you're more Xbox. I think Anthony is Nintendo guy, and otherwise. Bronson. Or oh, Danielle? Like, what do you what do you? Love Nintendo a lot. Uh, I play both. Oh yeah, we we all play uh, both. But like, do you have a preference? Well, um. Depending, uh, equipment wise, I would have to go with Xbox 360. Yes. <laughs> equipment -wise? Exclusive, exclusive games. I will go with PlayStation. What is, What do you mean by equipment? Equipment. Uh, what all comes with it, and like the lifespan. In my okay. opinion, like, okay. my Xbox seems to last longer than the PlayStation, and you know, which I I I really loved the backwards compatible thing on the on the new yeah. on the PlayStation yeah. three. But, uh, you know, I, I just, yeah, I don't know. Like, the lifespan on those and the design, I just, it just, you know, it wasn't anything special. Let's talk about the controllers. Do you like the Xbox or PS2 controller more? Yeah. See, for me, it varies That's game to game. For, like, racing. Exactly. Mine varies with the an handling Xbox and the whole. My hands are so big. For, like, racing games, I prefer the Xbox 360 controller. I just like how it feels in the hand better. But for majority of my games, I prefer the PlayStation 3 controller. I just feel it's more conforming to the hands. Um, but, God, that every time we talk about controllers, the first thing that pops into my mind... <laughs> no, no, let's continue. <laughs> and, and, and I think Ashton just caught on to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the first thing that comes to mind every time, I let's swear. Not. Let's Let's move on. Um. <laughs> Anyone that listened to my debate with Jessica last year knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but, yeah, so let's go back to Jenny's question since we totally went off topic. Um, but Man, yeah, like my, immediately. But yeah, Microsoft, I'd like to see more exclusive titles. Sony, they've already got the games. So if they announce a couple games here, that's cool. But I would like to see Sony focus on their online network. Um, really, that's the only oh. thing I think. Like, I love the Xbox 360. I love the PS3. The only thing that I really think the 360 has over the PS3, though, at this point, is the online network and the community. So I'd like to see Sony come out swinging hard at improvements so for them. Sony came out with, the, with an online community better than Xbox? Holy shit. Just, holy <laughs> well, shit. Yeah. Just, holy shit. That's the two words I have for that. Like, it could be fucking amazing. It could totally be Xbox. It. I am a big fan of Microsoft, so this is a lot coming from me. But, that, that, damn, that's what Xbox that not that's be the that's... turn of the universe in gaming. Online gaming. A combination of that that online uh, environments that you gain with uh, chatting with your friends and stuff like that, combine that with the fact that it was the first console to come out, uh, and so most people jump to that. Uh, that's how Xbox gained its dominance, and with PlayStation, you know, costing more, coming out later, and having not as uh, great a, an online environment, and Nintendo not really having too much of an online environment at all. Uh, they just have it for like. Basically, younger audiences. Well, right. Yeah, for Nintendo, I would like to see them prove to me why a hardcore gamer would be attracted to a Wii U. Because, that, because honestly, the only reason I'm attracted to it is because of Zelda. Right. The only, re the only reason I bought Skyward Sword be on the Wii because it was on Wii. If it was on Xbox, what about on Xbox? But of course, it's not going to be. See, see I, the. the company that I want to try and sell me most uh, on their console or their whole uh, plan is uh, Nintendo and their Wii U. They could really get something amazing uh, down. They need, you know, a couple first-party games for Wii U. I would like to see them bring one back that hasn't been used in a while, like F-Zero uh, or something like that. That would work real well with a, with a Wii U controller uh, in multiple ways. 
the one thing that I would love to see that I, I know they're not going to do but would really be cool is if they took a stab at the online uh, you know, marketplace and the online community that Xbox has mastered or, you know, done well to a point. Yeah, Nintendo uh, really needs to work on online more than anyone well, else. Oh. Right. Once, the, once they get that done... Sony. Once they get that done... And they have uh, enough, you know, good Nintendo first-party titles like at or around launch. They have sold me on a Wii. That's all they need to do for me, and I and I will absolutely buy that console. I honestly uh, have two Wii games right now. Two. Well, right, Wii's a different thing though. Wii is something else. This is a new chant, new thing that they can they could do something real great with. They just have to, you know, come out like. They did at E3 2010 with this console. And you not, see, whenever like, uh, I first saw the Wii U, I was like, holy shit, this is so much better than the Vita. I thought it was so much better than the Vita. You can ask Nick. I was like, oh my god. I was obsessed with it. <laughs> but now that I've looked at more spec for the Vita, I kind of am like, uh, I'm more Vita now than Wii U. Yeah, I just think the Vita, it's kind of hard to compare because it's like console yeah. and a portable, but the Vita attracts me more just because of the games it has, the audience it has, the capabilities. Yeah. I mean, the Wii U is cool, but to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of the Mario games. I'm not a fan of Zelda. I'm more a fan of like your Battlefields, your God of War, your Uncharted, like games like that. Those are the games that attract me. And you just yeah. don't get those experiences on the Wii U or the so DS, know, or... Wii U is... I mean, we and Nintendo in specific, is for a completely different audience. It's just everybody says for casual gamers, and it is. It's for casual and gamers or younger And Nintendo's going to stay that way. Nintendo's going to stay that way because that's where they found success. They tried to go more for the hardcore market with the GameCube, and they fell yeah, right on their ass. But I hate saying that because I grew up Nintendo, dude. I hate, like, do you not hate abandoning what you grew up with? I, thanks, I grew up thanks. with Zelda. I absolutely hate it. I, I like, left after 64 and haven't looked back until, you know, now Wii U's coming, and I'm looking my, at possibly buying myself a Nintendo console again. I don't know, though, and I need them to sell me on that. Yeah, I think it was my third birthday. I got, like, a Nintendo 64, and my mom took me to Walmart, and she said, okay, pick out two games. One of them we're going to give to this girl on your Christmas tree lifts, list. She totally tricked me. I picked out two games. I picked out Quest 64 and Mario Party 64, and she gave me both of them. She totally tricked me. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know. She's best mom ever, right? But what, I what, that, how old were you when this happened? I was in third grade, so... Oh, third grade. Okay, so... I thought you said you were three Quest when you got a 64. No, like... no, when Quest 64 came out, I was in third grade. Okay, all right, that's a little third, more. Second, third grade, yeah. So, all I remember is playing Quest 64 out the ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was like, my favorite game back in the day. My first memory, uh, one of my first memories of, of my life, but a first memory of gaming was on the NES with a little... 10 inch by 10 inch glass TV where I play where I watched uh, myself play uh, Super Mario Bros and Mike Tyson's Punch Out and a bunch of terrible games. Uh, Did you ever but, play Duck Hunt? Yeah, yes. I played Duck Hunt, but I didn't realize oh my that you God, needed I played the. Religiously. I played Duck Hunt, but I didn't realize you needed the gun. So I'm sitting here <laughs> hitting random buttons trying to make it, and nothing happened, and the dog kept laughing at me. I hate that game. Oh, man. You just popped out of the bushes and go, ha, 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 ha. I imagine, like, my mom hid it from me because I. No, well, that's a different story, but it involves Power Rangers and hurting other kids. So. <laughs> well, that's weird. Not... I want to know what Danielle just had to say because you cut her off. Oh. <laughs> oh no! I was just agreeing. I was just saying, Doug. Kind of. I was just. I played that religiously, along with like Donkey Kong on SNES and stuff like that. I, I love. Yes, the, remember the, Joust? That, that, hmm? Any of you remember Joust? Brittany. Joust. Yeah. Joust. Joust. Yes, my mom played it before I did. Joust. So whenever I was like old enough to play games, I would try to play it, but I could not play it for the life of me because it was way too hard for me at the time. Joust. Yeah, uh, Joust. I never. I, I never did it. Was it was on. I think it was on um, the very first Nintendo. It was on a couple. It was an arcade cabinet, and then I'm sure they ported it to Nintendo. Um, I don't remember which console it was on. Honestly, I just remember I could not beat it. 
And I'm pretty sure now that I could, like, it would be like oh, nothing sure. right now. A lot of my a lot of my video game experiences came from a Nintendo console. Where you, when you encounter something that you don't understand and it's really hard for you, like you know playing Joust. Me, it was a uh, Golden Eye. I don't know if I told this story on the podcast yet or not, but uh, the idea of that was my first time experiencing a first person shooter was in N64, and it scared the hell out of me. The idea of like you are in this person's head and you are holding a gun and you are on a boat and there are a bunch of people with guns trying to shoot you, not this avatar in front of you. It scared the hell out yeah, of me. Yeah, Goldeneye. Oh my yeah. god, dude, that game, dude. I remember. <laughs> there's there's two games that have a that have a large role in my heart. That and NBA Street. Now NBA Street, obviously on the PlayStation Two, two a couple a uh, bit later. But when I used to play travel baseball, we would go in between, we'd be going tournament to tournament, and freaking every night after we'd have a game or finish up our games for the day, we'd go back to the hotel and play either GoldenEye or go back to play NBA Street. Like, those are classic oh, NBA moments. Street. Those are oh, classic man. moments. GoldenEye. Did you guys? <sighs> hmm? Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask have you guys ever played Conquer's Bad Fur Day on Nintendo 64? Yes. Really? Yes. That, yes. You know, you're like the second person I know that's ever known about that game. Oh, uh, Bronson's probably listening to this right now, and he's furious because he'd be singing the, <laughs> the Mighty Pooh song. Yeah, I oh, know what you're man. talking about. No, dude, oh, the so Matrix fish. level. That was, oh, God, that it was great. badass. Oh, yeah, I like the, um, like the vampire level or whatever, his yeah, uncle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Oh, that, that you would be so amazed cool. that that came out on a N Nintendo console considering... Nintendo yeah. having these bunch of these first party games uh, that yeah. are like, and you would consider for kids, but then Conquer was bad for a day. And that game's terrible for kids. You should never it, show it to your kids yeah. unless they're insanely mature. Yeah, do you know the sunflower? Do you remember that part? Yeah. Where you had to like lure those bees to her because a dude wanted to pollinate her or something. Oh, yeah. Pollinator. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, he's like, I need to pollinate her. That's what I, I was like, oh, oh, Nintendo shit. take some risks and do something weird. They're never gonna do like that. that. Now they've made money with the, with <laughs> the safe route that they've made, but they, they could really do something with that. We'll see. They came out with another Conquer's Bad Friday on Xbox. They did, like regular Xbox. They did. Like, um, yeah. Although th that was from Rare, who is now working on Xbox's uh, avatars and whatnot. Yeah. Let's see. I I thought that game was so special. I knew something was wrong because I was little when I was playing it. I knew something wasn't right. <laughs> 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 My mom still let me play it anyway because she 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 didn't pay attention. I just point out the game that I want and I'd get it. I know your mommy. I love your mommy. <laughs> I, know, I like your mom too. <laughs> I freaking love your mom so much. She's so awesome. Every time I go on to Betty, she's like, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> hey guys, I'm I'm afraid I'm gonna have to bring it back to the question. <laughs> all right, yeah. It's always Ashton, <laughs> dude. Someone yeah, e yeah. someone emailed me about that. They're like, Ashton's always the one that says, "Oh, this is going great," <laughs> or "I'm loving well, like, the way this like, podcast is going." All right, or, what was the last I love the way this podcast is going. It says everything that I'm the one that has to bring it back. I'm. <laughs> That's my, yeah. Yeah, you stopped talking, didn't I? <laughs> wow, she totally just shut you up, Ashton. I don't understand. <laughs> Looking at, don't let her. What is the next question that we need? And I think that's it for the questions this week. That's all I'm seeing. That's all I'm seeing. So, that concludes episode number eight. We are under three hours this week. Um, so, <laughs> um, that's a good thing. <laughs> Um, but thank you all for listening. Be sure to leave a comment, questions, um, anything we'll be sure to respond to in the comment section, except for question questions. We will get back to you on the show next week. Yep. So uh, thank you guys for watching. We are out.